We're going to draw our own umbrella today along with the person standing in the rain. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to Hands on Art. My name is Sandy and today we're going to be a, doing a project called Umbrella. Here's a sample of the project. Now let's go over the supplies for this project. Now I have watercolor paper and watercolor pencils. If you don't have access to that, you can do this on you know regular paper and use colored pencils or markers. But if you have watercolor pencils, it's beautiful and fun and kind of appropriate to use water on an umbrella project. So if you need, pause this video, go get your supplies and meet me back. Okay, let's begin. I have a sample project here and I have my watercolor paper in a portrait orientation like this and I'm going to start drawing. Now anytime you want you can watch a little bit and then you can pause so that you can keep up. Um, but I'm going to get started. First thing I'm going to do is figure out about where halfway on this paper is. Now this is a 12 inch piece of paper. If I have a ruler, I can actually mark, you know, six inches, make a tiny little dot, um, but you don't have to. You can just eyeball it if you want. And I'm going to make a vertical line that starts a little below the edge of the paper and goes straight down to there. Now you could use the ruler if you want, but you can also freehand it. And then I'm going to go across like this about to make a plus sign. Now, I don't want it too wide. I want it about as wide as it is tall because we're making an umbrella and they're round, right? So we don't want a rectangular and odd shaped umbrella. So I think that's pretty close. Maybe I'm a little wide over here. And then that makes four panels of our umbrella. Let's do split each of these in half. Now, I could draw straight through, but it tends to make funny little triangles in the middle if you miss. So a way to get around that is to start in the middle, right there where the lines cross, and draw a shorter line. Now imagine a circle as you're doing this. Draw a shorter line for to split the umbrella into eight panels. All right, here we go. Now we have eight panels. So our umbrella over here, it looks kind of like an octagon. You could very slightly curve these lines if you wanted, or you could go very straight. You could even use a ruler and connect the lines. So we go through here and connect these lines. Now I find it easier to move my paper because my hand is easier. You might find the same that as you go, you wanna move your paper around. So hopefully yours looks something like this. If it looks too wide or too big or too small, this is a great time to adjust or even turn your paper over because you really need a pretty nice big umbrella to do what we're gonna do. Okay, the next thing we're gonna draw is our person. And notice, we just have them maybe from the waist down. A lot of their body is covered by the umbrella. Even their arms, because they're holding the umbrella, are hidden. So we're going to start about in the middle, not super wide because our bodies are narrower, and we're going to come out and make a raincoat or some kind of a jacket. And it's pretty much of a rectangle. I might get a little tiny bit curved on the edges. That'll look more natural, but it's a rectangle. And now we have to decide what's our person wearing. Like at this person, they're wearing jeans. Um, maybe I'll make one where we have somebody wearing a skirt. So here's their skirt sticking out. Now their coat's big and wide, so their skirt will stick out a little. Um, it's be a little bit narrower. And maybe I'll just curve it a little bit like that. And I'll draw some lines that look like the gathers or the pleats that you might have in a skirt. 
And then I'm going to draw some legs that come out from that. And our legs are maybe a little bit wider at the top, a little narrower at the bottom. Maybe we'll see a little bit where their knee is. We don't show too much of their legs because guess what? Now we're going to have rain boots. Now, if you remember when we did our cactus project, hopefully you got to do the cactus project, we drew our pots and our pots had a curved edge. Well, guess what? Our boots are kind of the same shape. So we'll draw them a little wider than the leg because boots tend to be kind of big rain boots. And then we'll come down a little bit and we'll draw the heel curved as well. So that's the back of the first boot. And here's the second boot. And maybe we see a little bit of the toe on this one. So maybe we kind of come out and I'm gonna erase that line. Maybe they have their foot a little bit turned to the side so that we can see the toe. You could do that to both of them or just to the one, you know, depending how their foot is facing. So I'll do it to both of them for this person. Okay, so now we have the back of our boots, but let's add this tiny little line. Look how much better that looks. Now we have the back of the boot kind of disappearing behind their leg. And we can do a little of that with the skirt too. We could just show a little bit that the skirt goes all the way around the person. Okay, what's next? Next, we're going to draw a puddle. And our puddle's going to start probably above their boots. And this is an organic shape, so we never see a square puddle, do we, or a, a rectangular puddle. So we have to think kind of organic, like, you know, puddles, they just sort of do what they want to do. They meander around. But one important thing is right here. You want the puddle to kind of jump behind the person's legs and come out the same on the other side. If they come over here and then jump wildly up, it, it'll look funny. I don't think it'll look like the puddle is doing something that puddles do. So um, have it jump kind of naturally behind their leg. Okay, the next step is let's add a horizon line. Now on this picture, that's this line right here. And that's just sh sort of showing, you know, the off in the distance, it kind of grounds your picture and it separates the ground from the sky. So think about a third of the way up your paper. So if I was going to divide my paper in one, two, three, probably about right here. If you have a ruler or a straight edge, it's pretty wonderful because you can just jump over your person and come out the other side and it looks very nice and natural. Now I think is a really good time to swap your pencil for your Sharpie. Now I have a Sharpie here that is what we want, ultra fine. If you have one of these, this is even nicer. It's two-sided, so this is the real skinny side and this is a little fatter, but we're gonna start with this. And let's go over all the lines that we've done so far on top of the pencil with the Sharpie. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back and erase my pencil lines. Now, now that I'm done with that, I'm just going to go for most of the things I'm going to do. I'm just going to go straight with my Sharpie and let's add a few little details. So one thing I think looks nice, see how we have some little kind of shadow marks on our picture. I think this kind of helps to give our person some depth and maybe add a little interest to them. Um, I'm also going to add some lines on their boots just to show some shadowing. Now, if I was wearing these boots, 
probably, there's not much light getting in. It's probably kind of dark in there. So I'm gonna color in these corners so that it looks dark. I think that'll look more natural. And I'm gonna add, you don't have to do this, but I kind of like adding these little extra lines on the umbrella that look like, you know, how umbrellas have those points. You have to make sure you don't poke anybody's eyes out with them. So I kind of like adding those. And a lot of times umbrellas have a little thing that sticks out here or it's a little bit bigger plastic. So I just colored that in. Now, my next step is to do these sections of the umbrella with various patterns. Now, you can see I have some here. There's also probably a handout on your table or that you could print out that shows other ones. Even if you go online and look up the word Zentangle, you'll find several examples of patterns. So this is a good time maybe to pause the video and think about what patterns you might want and put a different pattern in each of these with your Sharpie. If you're gonna do something complicated, you can start with your pencil and then go over it in Sharpie. But if you're doing something simple, you don't need to do that. I'm gonna show you a very speeded up video on some patterns. Here we make some dots and we make circles around the dots and circles around the circles and so on. You can overlap them or not, that's up to you. Um, here we make some asterisks, basically an X with a line in the middle and embellish it how you like. To make these scales, you just make bumps and remember to jump and land on the high points on each new row. Stripes are easy or checkerboards. In this checkerboard, instead of filling it in, we'll add some dots and some squares. You could do hearts or moons or stars or anything you like. This one makes me think of our optical illusion project. When you fill it in, it makes it look like it's actually zigzagging. Here's some flowers. Just remember not to go over the edges. Finish up with some wavy lines. Now I'm done with that part. Um, now let's do our puddle. I kind of like the idea of, you know, we'll draw a little droplet of water that's falling off of that um, structure from the umbrella. And let's pretend if it falls down here, maybe it makes a little ripple. So I'm gonna put some dots and think about some ripples that might come out from raindrops landing in our puddles. Now you don't have to do it this way. I just kind of like that idea. You could do patterns in your puddle. You could just kind of, you know, mimic the outer line of it. Here, I'll do that for this. Just kind of, you know, go around our puddle like this to kind of show how it's deeper in the middle maybe and not as deep on the edges. And I'm just kind of following that contour around to add some lines. Our art today has a lot of patterns and that kind of adds some pattern in the puddle. Um, now one more thing you might want to do, it's optional, but I kind of like this idea. If you have a ruler or a straight edge, just any, you know, kind of thick piece of paper, you can draw the rain coming down. Now, I don't want to draw on top of our cool umbrella, and I don't want to draw very much, but if I draw, ooh, I should have gotten those a little straighter. If I just draw a couple of lines, notice I'm not going all the way through, and they're parallel to each other. You don't want to draw. Rain doesn't come down all different directions. Usually it comes together with some wind. So that's what I'm trying to show here. And I drew just a little bit of rain in there coming down. Okay, it looks to me like we're ready for color. 
Okay, just for fun, I decided to switch up and paint a different picture than the one that we drew. Before I start though, I'm going to fill in all these little gaps around the circle to make this pattern stand out a little bit more. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is color in on our, our umbrella. And I want to make every one of these sections one solid color. Now I know it's tempting, you wanna make lots of colors. We can do that, we'll do it later. So I'm gonna start out and just color them in solid. You don't have to be super careful because when we use our water and blend them, they are going to look so much smoother. So you can kind of do a quick job of coloring these in. Now you can color them whatever colors you want. Like, you know, this is kind of random. I thought it might be fun for this one I'm doing now to make it kind of like a rainbow color. So I put my pencils in order and I know that, you know, between yellow and red is orange. So I'm gonna try to go around and and make this look a bit like a rainbow. And then let's go ahead and color in the clothing. Now, when we get to larger areas like the sky or the ground, it's really nice to do something like this. So here's my, I'm gonna make asphalt. So I'm gonna do the ground gray. If you wanted, of course, you could do it in green and make it grass. But to do a large area, you're gonna lay your pencil very flat. And you can cover a large area a lot more quickly than when you hold it like this. So see how I'm laying my pencil kind of flat on its side? Now when I go near my puddle, I'm being kind of careful. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap. It's fine to do that because when we get to our water, we can bring it in closer and make it look a little tidier, but you can see how quickly I can cover a large area when I turn my pencil on its side like that. So I'm going to do the ground like this and see how I have on this one, I made some lines to show how the rain is blowing kind of a little bit sideways. So when I do my sky, I'm gonna do it in the same direction as those lines. So same kind of idea, gonna lay it on its side and just don't get too close to the umbrella because you don't want to um, get blue where you don't really want it. And last but not least, we'll do our puddle. Now I'm just gonna do the puddle a single color like I did the umbrella segments, and you'll see what we'll do next. Okay, so here's our picture now, having just been colored with the colored pencil. You can kind of see on this sample where we're going and how it's gonna look when we're done. So now we have our paintbrush. I like a filbert paintbrush. That's the kind that has a little bit of a rounded edge. See, it's flat and it has, you can use it on the skinny side if you want to make a very thin line, or you can lay it this way and make a flatter line. And I have a cup of water and all I'm going to do is dip, maybe wipe just a little because if you get your paper too wet, it likes to curl and go over an area. So I'm going to start with the jacket here. And if it starts to not spread very well, I'm just gonna dip just the tips of the brush um, into the water. And I'm gonna color everything that's red all at once. So I'm not going to um, do my other colors. I don't wanna contaminate them. Here's some red here. All right. And now, I'm going to really rinse my brush. I'm gonna give it much more of a swish 
and I'm gonna wipe it off. And now we'll go for a different color. Maybe I'll do my yellow. And now because I know that orange is made from red and yellow, orange has yellow in it, I'm gonna go ahead and use this same brush to spread my orange. You see, I got a little yellow in it, but it looks fine to me, I like that. Now, because I'm gonna go on to purple, I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now, when you go into little areas, like these pointy tips on your umbrella, that's where you turn your brush sideways. And that way you don't get your colors mixed up where you don't want them mixed up. So you go ahead and use water to blend all of your colors and meet me back when you're done. Okay, I finished adding water to all of mine. Hopefully you did the same as well. And now we're gonna go do another layer of color. Um, so what we're gonna do, this is kind of a fun thing, is we're going to take our colored pencil and dip the tip of the pencil right into our water, just like that. And then we're going to go over something that's already here. So I'm going to color over these stripes in blue. And when you dip the tip, it makes an even darker color than the way we did it the first time. So you can see it makes a nice dark blue. If it starts to kind of fade out, you're gonna just wanna dip it again. So you're gonna um, dip it and draw, and then see how it's kind of losing its color? That means it's time to dip in my water again. And then we'll dip and draw. Isn't that neat? So if you like, now that's not mandatory, but if you like, you can add some accent colors by dipping and drying on top. Now keep in mind, if you have a dark color in the first place and you try to dip and draw, let's say you have this dark blue and you try to dip yellow on top of it, yellow's a lighter color, it may not show that well. Let's try it just for fun. Oh, well, it makes a kind of a green color because we know that blue and yellow makes green and it does work pretty well. So it'll be a little bit of figuring out what you like but go ahead and add some details in on your umbrella. And then also, if you like, I think it's kind of nice to add a little shadowing on our clothing. So let's add a little bit of depth. I'm on this side, I'm just gonna make that jacket a little bit darker. And I'll do it on the same side on the boots just to add a little bit of depth. And maybe right here where the crease is, where the two boots come together, it might look a little darker and, and like it's in shadow. And when I do my puddle, I've got just kind of a, you know, a solid color there. And you can go over and add some more shades of blue. You know what you can even do that's kind of a fun idea if you think about water and reflection, you might even see some of the colors of the umbrella or the clothing show up in the puddle as a reflection. So let's try adding a little, little bits of red for his jacket and shoes, and maybe a little touch of green like the pants have, and it'll look like a little bit of a reflection of the colors that are above. So go ahead and add your accents and meet me back when you're done. How's your rainy day umbrella coming? Hopefully you're pretty much done like I am. Um, two more possible things. Well, one for sure. Let's sign our name or I like to put my initials so I'm gonna put my initials and I'm gonna put 22, cause that's the year. And then last, this is optional, completely optional, but I bought this paint 
and it's metallic and it's pearl metallic. And I squirted a little bit in this container and I'm gonna use my paintbrush and add just little hints of it. Now I don't want a lot of it because it'll just stir everything up and make it messy. But I'm going to use the skinny side of my brush and I'm going to add little hints near where I have my rain lines or in the sky and it'll give just a little bit of shine to make things look wet. And then of course, I like to add a little on some contours in my puddle. Don't add very much, just a couple little dabs here and there will do ya. Um, and I think it'll add a fun little sheen and a little highlight to what we've done. I did that on this one and you can sort of see the little shine that it creates. So just a little bit of optional fun. Okay, when you're done, don't forget to rinse your brush out and you're done. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun, I know I did. And go have an art-filled week.